Watchmen understand birthing. Watchmen understand the times and the seasons. And so I believe that tonight as, as when we pray, I believe that there's going to be a release upon your life to be, to be a, of the tribe of Issachar, that watchman, prophet, the ability to know the times and know what to do. See, we've been around the prophetic for, we've been here in Florida now 35 years. And uh, we've heard a lot of prophetic words. We've heard a lot of really powerful prophetic words. But understand this, is that a prophetic word can come and go and not impact your life because you've never aligned to it. You've never activated your faith. You've never come into agreement and mix faith with that prophetic word. And I'm speaking of this over us individually, but I'm also speaking us corporately. We cannot assume that our nation, that the contending over our nation is done. We cannot assume that our appeal to heaven is over. As a matter of fact, I feel like we're coming into one of the greatest seasons of contending, one of the greatest seasons of pressing, one of the greatest seasons of appealing to heaven for the changing of our nation. This is no time to draw back. This is no time to get weary in well-doing. This is no time to say, well, let somebody else carry it. Every single one of us are going to have to carry our part. We're going to have to be willing to contend, to war warfare, to war with the prophetic words, to say what God has said. Years ago, I um, was in an early morning time of prayer at our church, and the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, the earth has just entered a tipping point moment. And interestingly, I had been preaching the first two Sundays of that year. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to deal with the spirit of Egypt. Now, hearing that as a prophet, I began to go in and study that to somehow apply it to the people of God that I was ministering to in our church, okay? But when the Lord said, I'm dealing with the spirit of Egypt, I studied that out. I understood what was behind that, that spirit, and I had been speaking on it to our church. But that morning, the Lord said, I'm bringing the earth into a tipping point moment, and it's going to depend on how my people position themselves and how my people pray, which way it's going to tip, now, we probably all understand the concept of tipping point, right? It's like if I had a, a bottle of water up here and I just pushed it, it's going to hit a point where I can stop pushing because it's just going to fall, right? So as I was sharing this in our, our, our group of intercessors, I had this, this man that was in my group that worked for um, Cisco, you know, big technology company. <laughs> and I made the mistake one day of saying, Mike, what exactly do you do? It sounded like, y'all remember Charlie Brown's mother? Wah, 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 wah. I didn't understand anything that he said, okay? So he's like some big computer geek genius. And so whenever the Lord would speak something to me, I would, I would share it with him, and he would give me a different perspective on it. And he said, he said, this is what tipping point looks like. He said, if we were to go out and lift something really, really heavy, he said, this is what we would do. He said, we would get, like, if we're going to go out and say we want to roll a car over. I'm, I'm like, Mike, you're scaring me, okay? But he said, if we want to like tip a car over, what we'd have to do is we'd have to get under it and we would have to lift. And we would have to lift until a certain point where we would have to shift. And then you have to push until a point where that heavy object reaches a point where one of two things is going to happen. Either you keep pushing a little harder so it will tip, or it's going to come back on top of you. I think the church is in that point. I think our nation is in that point. We've lifted it. We've been shifting. We've lifted through prayer. We've shifted through prophetic decrees. We've been shifting by, by prophetic acts. We've been pushing in the spirit. But I'm telling you, we are at a critical point in time. We're at a critical point in time. But understand this. <laughs> at the tipping point, something amazing happens. If you push until it hits the tipping point, something happens. Suddenly, everything that has been working against you 
begins to work for you. Up until that point, gravity is working against you. But at the tipping point, something happens and the gravity that has worked against you suddenly begins to work for you. I tell you, I believe that we're in a tipping point season right now. In the church, I believe we're at a tipping point season in this state. I believe that we're at a tipping point season in this nation. And I believe that we cannot afford to lose focus about what God's called us to do. Watchmen have become weary. Come on, nothing happens unless God mobilizes his people to pray. God is looking. A lot of times we're saying, oh my goodness, you know, uh, this one's doing that and this one's doing that. It should motivate us to pray. If you get frustrated by watching the news because I personally think the world has gone crazy, we need to let it motivate us to pray. Amen? And God has assembled tonight a group of watchmen that I'm going to pray for you tonight that God's going to kick you up to a whole new level of being able to see in the spirit, of being able to operate in revelation, of being able to, to grab a hold of, uh, of heaven's decrees and understand what God is saying. Because I believe that there's a whole new prophetic download that God wants to bring. You know, there's several different words that are seen in scripture that, that talk about or indicate the prophetic anointing. Now, the apostles and the prophets, we have to understand, are the foundation of the church, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone, Ephesians 2.20, right? But there is something that we've got to understand is that apostles without prophets can't function efficiently. Prophets without apostles get weird. Can I just say weird? Because, I mean, we've been in this thing for a long time, okay? Look at your neighbor and say, don't be weird, Okay? I've seen more weird, pathetic, not prophetic things come out of the, the central and south part of Florida. I believe that there's a turnaround coming for this state, that there's going to be some of the most powerful prophetic voices that God's going to raise up, not just from north Florida, but I believe from central and south Florida, God's going to raise up some strong, integrous, powerful, prophetic voices that God wants to release into this state. Because it's going to take people prophesying on every level in this state. To make sure our state aligns. Four dimensions in scripture. One is the Roe prophet. It's, it's translated seer. R-O-E-H. It's translated seer. These are the seer prophets. Okay. They tend to have lots of visions. It's very much like a chose prophet. C-H-O-Z-E-H. Chose is a seer of visions. How many here are seers of visions? In case you don't know, a vision is just God speaking to you in a picture form. You don't have to get caught in a trance. You don't have to have out-of-body experiences. You don't have to have any of that. It's just God communicating. How many, are, how many see visions? How many dream dreams? See, I think that God's going to really activate a very strong seer, prophet, anointing here. That's good news and bad news. Seer prophets have some of the most powerful revelation. I actually am a seer prophet that was trained in a Nabi prophet camp. So I'm a seer prophet. And I will tell you, I'll explain that second word in just a second, but a seer prophet sees visions, but here's what we've got to do. We've got to pray that God will sanctify our imagination. Okay, just lay your hands on your head right now. Father, I just thank you, God, that you're sanctifying our imaginations so that what we see, what we hear, what we receive from heaven, Father God, will be clear revelation, a chose uh, revelation, Father, as you speak to us in dreams and visions. In Jesus' name, amen. The Nabi prophets, N-A-B-I, is how God called prophets um, for the first half of the Old Testament. Nabi literally means to bubble up, to bubble up. So my father-in-law, who uh, Bishop Bill Hammond, who is considered to be the father of the modern prophetic movement, is a Nabi prophet. Some pe people pronounce it Nabi, okay? I don't know which one is right, Nabi, Nabi, okay? But these are prophets that lay their hands on you, and the Spirit of God bubbles up. They don't see visions. They don't have dreams. Bishop Hammond rarely has a dream. He rarely has a vision. But I will tell you that he trained a company of prophets to operate by faith. How many understand that we prophesy by faith? And so what he trained us to do is when we lay our hands on somebody, we lay our hands on and we say, and the Lord says, and we don't know what's coming next. It just bubbles up. How many have seen that, that gift function? Amen. 
And so there's a, a nab, Nabi or Nabi prophet, a Roe seer prophet, a Chose prophet, that's a seer of visions, and then there is a Shamar prophet. S-H-A-M-A-R. A Shamar prophet is a watchman prophet. Which I think, I felt like the Lord said, I'm assembling a gathering of watchman prophets this weekend. Okay? So look around the room. Because these are the people that are on the wall with you. In the Old Testament, they would position watchmen in two different places. They would position them on the top of a hill so they could oversee the harvest. Come on, how many believe that there's one of the greatest harvests of souls, one of the greatest awakenings, the send happened right here in the I-4 corridor. I believe that's very significant. And they positioned the watchmen on the walls. And the watchmen would look into the distance. And they would see who was coming. Is it a messenger or is it an enemy army that's coming? And the watchmen knew how to sound the alarm. And I believe that the enemy has worked overtime to try to shut the voice of God's Shamar prophets over this last season of time. Because, let's just be honest, there were some crazy people out there that gave it a bad name. I picked up Dutch's book on the Watchmen, again, written a long time ago. But I'm telling you, there's a revival of the Shamar prophet anointing that God wants to raise up. And I believe he's, he, he's, he's breathing over this Florida area and saying, I want in this forerunner state, I want Watchmen prophets to arise to know how to pull from heaven God's governmental authority, God's communication uh, uh, patterns, God's uh, design, God's, uh, God's alignment, and that the Watchmen prophets are going to pull it from heaven and sound the alarm so that the troops can rally. 